Uh, Pope Francis is sending a representative to the coronation tomorrow of King Charles III in England. Cardinal Pietro Perlin, the Holy See Secretary of State, will join world leaders and other dignitaries. Also, for the first time since the Reformation in the 1500s, a Catholic prelate will formally participate in the coronation. Cardinal Vincent Nichols of Westminster is set to give a blessing shortly after King Charles is crowned. We go now to Edward Petten, Rome correspondent for the National Catholic Register, who is in England right now for the coronation. Ed, great to have you back. Good to see you. Um, so talk to us about this. How significant is it that Cardinal Nichols will give the formal blessing, and what might it signal for the future of Catholic-Anglican relations? Yes, well, this is very historic, Tracy. I mean, this is the first time that a Catholic bishop has taken part in the coronation since the 16th century, since Bishop Stephen Gardner crowned Queen Mary. So it is a very significant um, significant development. And it's really also because Catholics, until uh, Vatican II, weren't actually allowed into a church that wasn't a Catholic church. So it's uh, that's also partly why in the coronation of the Queen Elizabeth in 1953, there were no Catholic bishops or, or Catholics present, although there were some Catholics, of course, because uh, the person who organizes the, the coronation is has traditionally always been a Catholic, the Duke of Norfolk. So um, so that's very significant. It, it um, I think it points to how um, the relations between Catholics and Anglicans have changed in some ways for the better, in some ways not, um, but they have become closer in some ways um, since the Second Vatican Council, and I think this possibly reflects that. And, and what can you tell us about Cardinal Nich Nichols uh, specifically? Uh, we understand he's heavily involved in promoting Christian unity. Yes, he is. And um, I think he's uh, looking at comments that he said about taking part in this. He's very happy to do so. I think. Um, and his, he's actually going to give a blessing at the coronation, uh, one of several who does give a blessing. And um, <laughs> it comes at a significant moment in the coronation, just after the crown is placed on the king's head. So I think he feels very privileged um, to be doing that. And um, yes, as I say, it is, it is uh, very historic in the sense that it hasn't been done for, for 500 years. Yeah, very historic indeed. And as you mentioned, uh, Pope Francis is sending uh, the Vatican Secretary of State there. He also donated a relic of the true cross for the coronation. What more can you tell us about that? Yes, well, Cardinal Parolin, uh, as being the first papal representative to participate in a in in a coronation uh, for 500 years, that's another historic uh, first for 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 the modern times. Um, but yes, also the these relics, uh, these two fragments of the true cross. Um, are actually going to be integrated into the processional cross. Um, so they're not alone. They are a gift to uh, to the king uh, from Pope Francis. Um, it's uh, some some are concerned that they say, you know, it's okay to give such relics to the Orthodox. They they believe in the they have the seven sacraments. The Anglican Church doesn't have the seven sacraments. The rites and ordinations are invalid. So so there is some controversy about that. But I think generally it's seen as a as a very um, positive ecumenical gesture. Yeah, and millions of people uh, in the UK and, of course, around the world uh, will be watching tomorrow. Tell us about the atmosphere there right now, Ed. Yes, well, it's very much a festive atmosphere. It's uh, lots of bunting and uh, British flags flying everywhere. Uh, there'll be, I think, tomorrow, I mean, it's going to be a long weekend. There's going to be a public holiday on Monday. So it's a long weekend of festivities, and we'll have um, plenty of street parties, which is what's usually done at this time, uh, where lots of, uh, it's a great community time, great time for, for communities to get together and celebrate uh, the coronation of the new monarch. And uh, this is a tradition that goes back very far. And then also I'm curious about, you know, in what ways has this ceremony been influenced by the Catholic faith? What can you tell us about that? Yes, I mean, this is very interesting because the coronation is, is, is probably the most Catholic state liturgy or state ceremony that we have. In fact, 973 was the first coronation of King Edgar, and that was the first consecration of a king in the country and it is a very catholic um liturgy it's it's um the pope the the king will be anointed it won't be seen when he's anointed he'll be anointed with holy oils and uh these go um over the, the upper part of the body and then and these oils are actually consecrated in jerusalem and so I think it shows very much the, the temporal and spiritual nature of the monarchy. And often that's forgotten, the spiritual aspect of the monarchy. Uh, but you'll see it very much in the, in the coronation rites. Um, for example, he's, he receives an orb 
which is set under the cross. And um, it says in the liturgy that, remember, always the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. It's very much Christocentric in that way. Um, and as I say, that goes right back to, to the Catholic roots of the coronation. Well, Ed, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us about all this very exciting. Uh, thank you again. We appreciate it. My pleasure.